morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Introduction to the Environmental Protection Agency's SDIR Program. I'm Rebecca Todd, your moderator this morning, and I work as Innovation Specialist for the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center. We are taxpayer funded to provide confidential one-on-one -on -one consulting, training, and market research services for entrepreneurs and established businesses across the state. We've been working in Arkansas for over 40 years and have 11 regional offices throughout the state that allow us to serve companies where they're at. Most of our regions have at least one university-based center. Through our competitively funded federal and state technology awards, the ASB TDC is able to offer continued outreach through events like this webinar to share information about the SBIR and STTR program for statewide and national audiences. We help entrepreneurs with each step of preparing and submitting small business innovation research or SBIR proposal applications, as well as state level applications for supplemental technology commercialization funding. To date, our clients have won 81 SBIR or STTR awards across the participating agencies. And this includes the Environmental Protection Agency. Through our industry database subscriptions, we are able to locate market data to help our technology clients prepare key sections of their SBIR proposals, such as the commercialization plan. Everyone who's registered for today's event will receive a copy of the slide as well as a link to the recording via the GoToWebinar email. And before we get started, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the GoToWebinar. So first, you should see that you have a control panel on the right side of your screen. You can minimize the panel by clicking on the arrow button that's orange in the upper left corner. You can also expand the panel by clicking on that same button. So take a moment to practice. And second, you have the ability to submit questions using the question pane located near the bottom of the control panel. So please do submit questions throughout today's presentation. Our speaker will have time at the end to do a Q&A with all of us to answer your questions. Before we get started, I want to introduce today's speaker, April Richards. April Richards is the program manager of the Small Business Innovation Research Program for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. The EPA's SBR program focuses on supporting small businesses to develop and commercialize novel environmental technologies that address EPA's mission to protect human health and the environment in areas such as clean and safe water, air quality, land revitalization, homeland security, sustainable materials management, and safer chemicals. April has worked at EPA for over 15 years. She has worked as a fellow on the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee where she provided technical expertise on environmental issues. She previously worked for an environmental engineering consulting firm in Florida, primarily in drinking water treatment. April has a master's degree in civil environmental engineering and is a professional engineer. So with that, I'll now turn the presentation over to April. Take it away, April. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you so much for hosting me. Um, it's always nice to be here. And great timing for us because um, we are getting ready to announce our annual solicitation. So I would love to give you some information on that. And let me get advancing the slides. Okay. I imagine this crowd knows a bit about the SPR program, but I do like to provide a little bit of context just as we are part of a larger program across the federal government. And the goal of that program is really to get small businesses engaged in federal R&D. So we want nimble entrepreneurial folks like yourselves to help us solve some of the big research and development issues that we're facing. Um, you know, a lot of money goes to academic institutions. This is a way to get some of that money to the small business community. The goal is commercialization. That's what kind of makes it different than academic research. We really want a marketable, saleable product as our end goal. And there are 11 agencies that participate, so we are one of those. And there is this formula to determine how much an agency has in their budget for SBIR, and it's 3.2% of an agency's extramural R&D budget. So, you know, the big players are kind of the DOD's Department of Defense and NIH, National Institutes of Health of the world. They have $100 million plus budgets. Um, and across the federal government, it's three over $3 billion in this pool of money. So it is, it is a great resource for companies. It's non-dilutive investment. It's not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. Um, you just have to follow the instructions <laughs> to get in and get access to that money. 
the program is administered by SBA, Small Business Administration, and that is their website right there, sbir.gov. Has links to all 11 agencies, uh, their funding announcements, projects that have been funded, um, lots of state resources. You guys are already plugged into some of your state resources, but there are a lot of resources there. Um, there's tutorials on how to apply. Um, so a lot of good stuff there if you need more information on the program. And they are, um, just a little foreshadowing, they are moving to, instead of calling it SBIR, they're going to call it America's Seed Fund. They think that's more relatable and less bureaucratic. So stay tuned for that big change. Okay, so let me talk about EPA's program. Um, I always say this, but I personally love EPA's mission. It's very short and super important, uh, protecting human health and the environment. And so every agency gets to use the SBIR program to meet their needs, uh, to meet their mission. So we are looking to seed technology innovations um, that help us meet that mission. And so <laughs> to save the planet, we have a whopping about $5 million per year. So we are one of the smaller SBIR agencies. And kind of like the other agencies, we do one funding cycle per year. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, solicitation gets released. We fund phase ones, we fund phase twos. Um, so we're constantly in that cycle and we're getting ready right now to release our phase one solicitation. Um, and then from that, you know, we fund in a phased approach, which maybe you guys are familiar with, but phase one is proof of concept. So really like kind of funding a larger number of phase ones, good ideas. Uh, for EPA, that equates to $100,000 for six months. And so we're seeding those ideas, right? And then those ideas that are successful in that six month period um, then compete for phase two. And that's really the, the bulk of the effort. That's really to take the technology um, development and towards commercialization. And for us, that's $400,000 for two years. And we really, know that finding partners and getting outside interest in your technology is really important to commercialization. Um, so to incentivize that, we can provide another $100,000 in phase two to really encourage that third party investment. And just as a matter of process, we do award all of our projects as contracts. So some agencies use grants, some use contracts, but we just, that's the funding mechanism, funding mechanism that we use is contracts. Okay, so EPA, SBIR program, I've talked about how small it is. Let me tell you <laughs> what's important about it and maybe think about why it could be a good fit for you. Um, so because we're fairly small budget-wise, we do have fairly specific topics. Um, there are so many topics out there that we need to address for environmental protection, but we pick a few priorities each year. And when I say a few, it's like 15 to 20. Um, and we really want proposals that are responsive to those topics because we want our funding rate to be sort of on par with other agencies. So we're really striving to get 15 to 20% of proposals funded. So that's why we tailor our topics each year. Um, but once funded, we do have, we work closely with our companies. We really want to help you succeed. We really want to protect the environment. Um, so we do provide companies with an EPA technical connection someone that can help them navigate EPA regs or priorities, um, help you make connections. We do provide uh, commercialization support, that TABA, technical and business assistance. Um, we pay for that above and beyond your phase one award. Um, so everybody gets that in phase one. Um, we work really hard to communicate successful projects. Um, we have a really strong communications team that that works on social media we do web stuff we have a newsletter and we really will try to amplify your success um, through our federal government platform and then of course we're helping to protect the planet i do think most people that apply to epa feel strongly about that they, they want to make money obviously they want to have a commercial success but they feel uh, a strong social mission too and we welcome that so our solicitation is planned to open on June 15th. Um, we have really kind of tightened up our tight line, timelines. So I do feel pretty good that we will, it will open that day. If it wasn't that day, it would be a day one or two days later. Um, and it will close in August. 
It, the current close date is August 23rd. Um, I will say that everything I'm saying here right now is, is the plan. Please, once the solicitation is released, that's the official word. Um, so this is just really to provide guidance, but please consult the solicitation for the actual due date, the actual topics, all the review criteria, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, the minute it's announced, that information will be there on our website, on the funding opportunities page. Um, if you decide to apply, you actually apply through FedConnect. I will talk a little bit more about that later. And really the best thing you, you can do, if you have any interest in our solicitation or environmental technologies or anything, please sign up for this listserv. Um, this is our newsletter. Um, the minute the topics are announced, we will release them through this listserv. Once the date for the solicitation is absolutely final, it'll be announced through here. And then throughout the year, we'll just send other information on highlights or other um, opportunities that might be good for environmental entrepreneurs. So again, all you have to do is put your email in there and you can sign up for that um, newsletter. So I am gonna talk quite a bit about topics because again, I think that's the most important thing for us. If you have a proposal um, that you would submit in one of these topic areas, then you have a good chance of getting funded. So I really wanna talk about what we're looking for this year. Um, and if you are familiar with our program, we have these broad focus areas. These stay more or less the same every year and they kind of align with the way EPA does business, which is kind of by media. So we have like a water topic, we have air topics. Um, we do have some Homeland Security responsibilities at EPA. So we always have a topic there. Um, we've had a lot of success in the materials realm and um, we're moving to some new terminology this year called circular economy, but that's kind of the same as sustainable materials. Looking at safer chemicals, and then we have one topic in risk assessment. So I'm going to dive into these a little bit. This is one slide with all of them. Again, these are anticipated. They will, they're not officially released. You guys are getting a preview. I know that's very exciting. Um, but they should be released any day. Uh, and they could be tweaked slightly. We could lose one or something, but this, this should be what it looks like. So let me just dive in, uh, dive into the water here, no pun intended. So here's the clean and safe water topic. We've got uh, four topics. We've got one in reuse. So looking at decentralized wastewater treatment for intentional, intentional non-potable reuse. We've got two focus on plastics, this awful picture to the left. We all have heard a lot about this issue of microplastics in the water and plastics. Um, we're looking at ways to characterize microplastics. And we're also looking for ways to remove, remove aquatic trash upstream, uh, hopefully before it becomes microplastics. And then we have one sensors topic, looking at detection of contaminants of emerging concern. Um, and that includes PFAS, the, the ever-present um, perfluorinated alkyl substances. So that's water. Let me move to air. We have quite a few monitoring topics here, looking at air toxics, looking at HAPs, those are hazardous air pollutants. We have some uh, methane sensors, so kind of a climate focused topic. We have a radon topic that we had last year, so looking at ways to reduce radon exposure. And then we have technologies for um, recovery, recovery of refrigerants. So this is to tackle HFCs hydrofluorocarbons, also um, a focus for climate issues. For Homeland Security, um, looking at technology solutions that build community resilience to disasters. This is kind of like harnessing social media possibly or other ways to get communities ready <laughs> for disasters. Um, and then a totally different tact that is also part of our Homeland Security Office, but looking at a way to sense oil spill droplet size uh, for use on emergency underwater vehicles. So that one sounds really cool and completely different than anything we've done in the past. Um, but obviously looking at ways to characterize oil spills and understand what's going on. Okay, for our circular economy, sustainable materials topic, 
Uh, we have had these topics a few times, but we're going to do food waste again. This is looking at the consumer end of things, um, acquisition, preparation, and storage. We are looking at recycling. This is a very broad topic, just ways to improve our recycling system. And then we have a topic specifically focused on plastics, um, looking at reducing, reusing, and recycling um, plastics to advance that circular economy approach and to hopefully eliminate that picture. Safer chemicals, uh, we've got two prevention, uh, pollution prevention approaches. One is PCB-free color, and by color it could be pigments, inks, but any way to add color to something. Um, those technologies have often used PCBs, um, and those are hazardous, so we want, we want ways to add color that don't use those chemicals. In that same vein, but worded much differently and longer, we're looking for technologies for rubber. They're anti-degradant technologies. Current solutions have a hazardous chemical that has um, been shown to be really harmful for like salmon in, in the West. So we're looking for ways to add that property to rubber without the use of those harmful chemicals. And then switching tax, we have an innovative enhanced efficiency fertilizers topic, so more of an ag-focused um, topic. And last but not least, we have one topic in risk assessment. Risk assessment is really important for the agency, and we're looking for ways to evaluate chemicals. Um, we have a lot of, <laughs> of our mission is figuring out how harmful chemicals are, um, so we're looking for risk assessment tools that will help us do that. And I will say I've given you a high level title for each topic. There will be a more detailed topic in the solicitation with some background information that really helps you understand what we're looking for. So you will get more information than this. Um, so that's it for topics. Um, I've said this a million times, but the budget is modest, makes the program competitive. So we really want proposals to be responsive to those topics that I just reviewed. I, as the program manager, can definitely provide you some feedback. Um, I have to say, especially now that the solicitation is not open, I can provide you more advice. Um, but even when the solicitation is open, I can provide you some general advice if you just can't decide whether it's worth your time to submit a proposal. Um, we do understand it's no small task to put all those parts together, so you really want to be sure that um, you've got something that's a fit for us. So our schedule, um, again, we have worked really hard to tighten our timelines and we were really successful last cycle in making awards uh, solicitation close to phase one start date was like 120 days, which is two to three times faster than we've done it in the past. So we are getting small businesses funded a lot faster and I'm very proud of that. Um, so our solicitation is gonna open in June it's going to close in August, and uh, phase one awards should be made in December. And then if, if you're a planner, the phase two, the subsequent phase two will, will open right at the end of that phase one. If, if you've got a phase one contract, it would open near the end of your phase one contract. Proposals would be due about 45 days later. And then again, um, a pretty streamlined approach to funding, and we should have you your phase two award by October of 2023. And so for proposal evaluation and selection, every agency does it a little differently. We really have put a focus on commercialization. We really think that's important to get that sort of ingrained in our processes early, even in phase one. Um, so we are looking at um, commercial strength, technical strength, and relevancy to the topic. Um, and the way we've saved so much time is just putting those reviews simultaneously. We used to do them one after the other, and now we're doing them at the same time. So that saves us a lot of time. So let me just talk a little bit more about those review criteria. So for the commercial evaluation, we're looking at the innovation, intellectual property. Uh, we're looking at the market opportunity, like what, what does the market look like? We want to see how strong your company team is commercially. And we want to know what your commercialization approach is. How will you get that technology to market? And I will say, we really want to broaden participation in the program. We really want new companies to feel like they can apply. 
So we've tried to write our criteria so that if you have a track record, that's great. But if you don't have a track record, that's fine. If you can just show us the potential that you have to commercialize or the potential that your team has. So again, we really welcome new companies to apply to our program. Um, that commercial review is outsourced, by the way, to a commercial, commercialization contractor. Um, the technical criteria are the technical approach and then the company team from a technical perspective and then the relevancy criteria and the impact, like how impactful would your technology be for the environment? Um, so those two reviews are done internally by EPA experts, the technical and the relevancy. And I will just say that, you know, we're EPA, we get super excited by like avoided carbon emissions or reduced water use or less toxicity. So if you do plan on applying, we certainly, I would certainly encourage you to um, clearly articulate the potential impacts of your technology. All right, there's FedConnect. Just if you are applying, um, that would be farther down the road, but you just have to make sure you submit your proposal there through there. It's just a portal um, to allow us to receive your, your proposal. And even though it is, it's free money, uh, this is, you have to jump through the hoops, right? We're the government. So I'm afraid these registrations are requirements. Um, they are requirements for our agency, but they actually, many of them are requirements for any uh, SBI or sub submittal. Um, so the SBA wants to know who's applying. They need to track like how many proposals we're getting and how many we're funding. So you have to register with them at sbr.gov. Um, that I think is pretty easy. They will assign you a number, an SBC control ID. SBC is small business concern. And you just have to include that number. For us, you just include that number in your proposal so we know you've done your registration. Again, we use contracts, so you have to have your SAM registration um, in place. And I don't know if you if any of you have an active SAM registration already, you still have to renew it every year. So please make sure it's up to date. Um, again, that allows us to do business with you as the federal government. Uh, there's been this switch from DUNS numbers. Probably a lot of you have a DUNS number, but now we're moving to something called Unique Entity Identifier, and that happened last month. And so the federal government is using UEI, UEI instead of DUNS. So just you can check your SAM to see if you've been updated or um, just make sure that, that you have that number um, in hand as well. And then again, for us, we use FedConnect. You just have to register there prior to submitting a proposal and that just lets you um, submit your proposal to us. So those four registrations need to be in place before you submit. And then I always do kind of a public service announcement. Um, I love the EPA's mission and I wish we had some more money to fund projects, but we are not the only game in town for environmental technology funding. So these, if you have, if you don't see a fit for our topics this year, consider these other agencies. Um, National Science Foundation has a very broad umbrella of topics. As a matter of fact, they'll say they're topic agnostic as long as your idea is good and you have the commercial um, approach nailed down. NIEHS does funding uh, for like site cleanup and detection. So if you had a technology in that area, Department of Energy obviously does a lot of energy, some energy efficiency, maybe renewables. They also do work in water and other areas that you might not immediately think of Department of Energy. We tend to have overlap with agriculture um, through things like aquaculture or water quality or soil quality. So that's another possibility. And then NOAA, they do climate modeling, um, things obviously with ocean and atmosphere. So another place to consider if your technology might um, go into that realm. So wrapping up here, um, again, just make sure your technology is responsive to the topic. If you, if this is if you decide to apply, um, read the solicitation carefully, start your registrations early, um, develop a strong readable proposal. I do give this advice a lot. I do think that if you can have someone else read your proposal, especially like your project summary, 
like, does it make sense? And are you conveying the potential impact of your technology in a way that will get a reviewer interested and excited? Um, for us, definitely address all the review criteria. We are very process driven. So we're gonna give you a score for each of those review criteria. So maybe some you're really amazing at and some are a little weaker or whatever, but if you address them all, you will get some score there and that will help your overall score. Um, and then just don't wait to the last minute. We have, you know, we have big government clunky systems, but like our FedConnect will not take a proposal one minute late. So just, and I think most of government systems are like that. So please just get your proposals in early if you decide to apply. And I just like to do some success stories and I think we're pretty good for time. So let me just show you a couple of our cool projects that we funded just to give you a flavor of different types of projects. Um, water and wastewater is very important to EPA emissions. So we have funded this company called Microbi and they've got an innovative process that uses microorganisms to remove nutrients from wastewater. Um, and they recover some of them as valuable byproducts. So we love that as tree huggers that we're treating the water, also recovering uh, what would be a waste and making it a commodity. Um, they have worked on energy efficiency. It is less expensive than some conventional methods. And of course we care about that because we there's no good if it's environmentally efficient and it's more expensive and nobody wants to use it. So we need it to be competitive. Uh, these guys have had good success in Europe, uh, sometimes a little bit ahead of us in the water treatment realm and they won an award in 2020 um, from the Scottish Water um, Institute. So that's cool. Um, Ecovative Design is one of our favorites because they have developed this really cool disruptive mushroom material. We funded them a while ago for um, uses such as packaging and construction materials. And they basically, it's a bio-based material. They grow mycelium, which is the mushroom roots on natural and waste like byproducts, sometimes ag waste. And they make all these cool materials. Um, they have some really big clients. They've raised a ton of capital and there's just like nothing they can't make with mushrooms. They just did a spin off My Forest Foods to produce um, whole food, meat-free ingredients. And they've also launched this uh, fashion for Good Cooperative where they're making uh, mushroom leather. So this really cool jacket is made with mushrooms. And sort of a different tack for us, um, looking at indoor air, a lot of um, people in the world cook with cook stoves in their houses and it's a huge indoor air issue. This company in Oregon, ASAT, developed a stove, a clean burning biomass stove for heating and cooking. They have a partnership with the Gates Foundation um, they have had really good success internationally. They're in 30 countries, but now they've actually refocused and they're really looking at the U.S. market for bio-based uh, cook stoves. And they won the 2020 uh, Tibbetts Award for excellence in SBIR. And I think this is my last one, but um, this is a water sensor called Algae Tracker from a company in Boulder, Colorado, Aqua Real Time. These guys are still in their phase two, but they've had some really good commercial success looking at detection of harmful algal blooms, which is HABs, which is a big issue for EPA. It's you know, caused from excessive nutrients in the water. And you know, it's you need to know it for beach closures and, and health hazards and everything. Anyway, they're using um, network of floating buoys to detect them. And again, they've got multiple government clients already, which is great for this stage, especially for the stage of their research and development. And I think that is it. Um, that is me right there. Feel free. I think the best advice I can give you is you have any inkling that you want to apply or if you have questions, just reach out to me via email. Um, I'm happy to try to give you some advice and I'm kind of it. I can, if you have a specific topic question, we can work to find, ask the topic author or something, but I'm the best place to start. Uh, there's our website again. There's the listserv. Again, that's a great way to just get notifications the, the minute our announcements are out. There is a link to a program overview if you just want like the good old days when we used to print out a trifle. That's what that is, but it is a nice overview of the program. And um, that's the SBA's website. 
And again, we're right on the precipice of announcing all of this officially. This is kind of a preview. So I feel like if you go to these links right now, some of them are saying, you know, coming soon. So we're literally in the next day or the next couple of days, we should have most of these announcements out. So that's it for me, Rebecca. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, April. This is wonderful information and um, good insights as well. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, you can submit questions in the chat pane of the control panel. And um, I'm going to give folks a couple minutes right now. We don't have any questions, it doesn't look like, but um, just to share my screen, there's an upcoming event that might be of interest to everyone. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, is it showing up on your end, April? I can see it, yes. Um, so this is an event called the, the SPR SCPR Spring Innovation Conference. Um, that'll be next month, June 13th through 15th in, in DC. And this is a, a great place where you can meet people like April and, and other agency representatives in person, um, talk about your project ideas and hear, um, hear more about what they are interested in funding and how you might fit into all their programs. They do something called reverse pitches where they share what kind of topics they, they feel that align well with their mission and objectives as agencies. And so this is a great event that happens. It's this not been in person in a while, so this will be a great opportunity if you have the time to, to go check out, out uh, all the different agencies in one setting and meet others that are in the same boat as you, um, research-based companies that want to bring their ideas to the marketplace. So I highly recommend it if you um, have time to check it out. Um, go go to this website and you can learn more about that. All right, I still don't see any questions. Uh, if you think of anything uh, later, feel free to. Um, if you're in, based in Arkansas, feel free to reach out for me for assistance. Rebecca Todd, um, you can find us. You pull up our website while well, I've already got my screen shared. Um, so our website is btdc.org, um, and I'll put my email in the chat too. I can help anyone that's Arkansas-based or who has a partner in Arkansas. And if you have other questions, as April mentioned, that are specific to EPA, um, once there's more information about those topics, uh, um, she can provide some clarification there. But I want to thank you again, April. This is wonderful. Uh, always it's a pleasure to host your events. And um, hope everything goes well at the national conference next month. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for hosting. Uh, and, and again, feel free to reach out with any questions. Very good. Hope everyone has a wonderful day and um, look forward to seeing you at our next events. Once those are out, we'll have those shared with you by GoToWebinar email as well. So see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.